and also on our website. We can get going today. So welcome again to the Letter to Philippi live broadcast, which is here Monday through Friday at 12 noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time, 10 p.m. Jerusalem time. And for those feeling left out, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. in uh, Denver and 2 p.m. in Chicago, also cities that I, I, I have been to and and have enjoyed visiting so we're getting started today thank you for uh for coming to our broadcast today hopefully we'll uh, learn something new today from uh, paul's letter to philippi and again this is the letter to philippi live broadcast an initiative of the newly formed messianic jewish theological organization letter to philippi incorporated and uh, we are beginning this new work of uh of establishing a 21st century Messianic Jewish theology grounded in the in the scriptures of Jewish people, grounded in Jewish tradition, and informed by the the Christian tradition. We'll be building a Messianic theology for the future and a building an understanding of the scriptures from a Messianic Jewish perspective, which this broadcast is all about. So we begin today in uh, Philippians chapter 1, verses 27, and we'll go through the end of the chapter 30, verse 30 today. And as I said, tomorrow tomorrow we will uh, get started into chapter, introduction to chapter 2. So today, so we begin with verse 27, where we read, Only conduct your lives in a way worthy of the good news of the Messiah. So that whether I come and see you, or I hear about you from a distance, you stand firm, united in the Spirit, fighting with one accord for the faith of the good news. Paul strongly encourages the Philippians to continue to live worthy lives that reflect their faith trust in the good news they have received. By living lives that are worthy lives, lives that are, are of value, lives that are are in the service of God and in the service to others. They demonstrate that they're, that, they're, that they have received, believed, and put into practice the good news of the Messiah. Whether Paul returns to see them or not, or hears about them from others, he calls them to live godly lives that are grounded in unity, a fundamental teaching of Paul. So Paul here, whether he is able to 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 come back and be with them physically to see how they're living out their lives for the Messiah, or whether he hears about them from others, he calls them, whether he's there or not, to live lives that are worthy of their, their calling, they're worthy of their being connected to the Messiah. Paul call, Paul's call to unity in the lives of the Philippians, reflects the corporate nature of faith. In our in our modern American individualist way of understanding our lives, it's it's so it's so common as people talk about you know your relationship with God, your relationship with Messiah, your individual that, that people say, well, I I came to faith in in the Messiah. That is an individualistic faith. Paul here is calling us to understand the more biblical perspective of our faith is in a community and that we are we are believers together, not just individual followers of Shu, but we are part of one community, one family, one body of believers. Though each person comes to trust in the Messiah as an individual, it is in a community, a unified body of believers. That individual and communal faith grows to be more like the Messiah. Moreover, the unity of the community would emulate the unity of Paul and the Messiah. Emulate the unity of Paul and the Messiah. Demonstrate that the Philippians were following the way of their teacher, Paul, and their master, Yeshua. So in this call to unity and faith, unity of the believers, Paul is calling them to emulate the unity of that he has with the Messiah and calling him to enter in as a community into 
relationship into union with the Messiah. That is, they are one in the body of Philippi. And for us, an example, one in our, our Messianic communities today. We are emulating the union that uh, with the Messiah as as a unified community. In verse 27, the Greek word politeomai, which, which Stern translated conduct your lives, is only used one time in Paul's letter, letters and only concerns one other time in the Brit Kaddish Shah in Acts 23.1. So this, this word for where it is only used once in Paul's letter, the Paul to Oimai. In both references, the word refers to one's conduct as a citizen. So when he speaks about their, their conduct, their life, their living worthy lives, in, in the use of, of this Greek word, it's, it's, it's related to citizenship. So whereas in, in the Roman world, there was the, the importance of Roman citizenship, Paul here, is calling the Philippians to understand their citizenship as a part of the people of God, as a part of the the family of the Messiah, the family of, of faith. Paul calls the Philippians here to understand their new way of life as not only followers of Yeshua, but also as citizens of heaven, and not a walk in the way of a heavenly citizen. So in Paul, in, in Paul calling them to live lives, worthy lives, lives of service, lives of devotion to God. He's making them aware they are citizens of heaven, that, that, that they're not, they're no longer just citizens of Rome or citizens of, of the cities that they are living in, but they're citizens of heaven. So they're as heavenly citizens, he calls them to understand their lives. They need to conduct their lives as citizens of heaven, no longer as just citizens of the Roman world, but the citizens of the heavenly world. Also, the Jewish historian Josephus used the word politoamai when describing how he began a conduct, a Jewish way of life, which would have been based on halakha, Jewish law and practice. And in his, in his life, life's the, uh, we read from we read from Josephus, the Jewish historian. So when I accomplished my desires, I returned back to the city, being now nineteen years old, and began a, began to conduct my life as Polytomai, according to the rules of the sect of the Pharisees, which is akin to the sect of the Stoics, as the Greeks call them. So we see here in Josephus writing about him, him according his life to the the way of the Pharisees using the word polotom am I we, all, we we can see see and all, see also back looking to Paul as he's using the word polotom am I to to call the Philippians to understand their new life ordered by being in Messiah and following the God of Israel living in the context of life following the God of Israel as Josephus chose to conduct his life in accordance with the halakhic way of life and practice of the Pharisees, Paul here is calling the Philippians to conduct their new lives as followers of Yeshua, walking the example of the Master. In verse 28 we read, Not frightened by anything the opposition does, this will be for them an indication that they are headed for destruction and you for deliverance. And this is from God. The main opposition of the Yeshua believers in Philippi would have been from the pagan religions of their past. As, as I said earlier, in Philippi, Philippi was, was known for various religious traditions that, have come, that had come through the area, through the area of Macedonia over the years. The Greek traditions, the Roman, the Roman emperor cult, the other, other traditions of Egypt, the mystery cults. So there are many different religious options and religious backgrounds that these people in Philippi had left to put their faith trust in Yeshua and to become followers of the God of Israel. So these are these are continuing distractions. Also, also the thing with Philippi is not only do they have all these many different religious traditions that are practiced, 
by the people. They were also also keen on syncretism by 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 having you know taking this from one from the Greek religion, this from the 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 Roman religions, this from the Egyptian religions, and melding different parts of them. They'll they say that well, you know, they may honor Diana of the of the Greeks, but also practice Egyptian Egyptian mystery religions along with that. So there was like this melding of different different traditions, you know, kind of like as you know, there's, there's people who are like who consider themselves Jews. They are Jew. They're they're Jewish and practicing Buddhism, Buddhism, so they were Jewish and Buddhists. In in Philippi, we, it was a common for people to have multiple religious traditions they would combine together in, in different ways. So Paul is warning them to, one, to not go back to the, the, the false pagan religions of their past, whether, as I said, it was Greek, Roman, Egyptian, or other, other faith traditions, or to take take on on in their new Yeshua faith to add in add in parts of the of, of Greek religion or the emperor cult or or other things to their Yeshua faith to have basically be be Yeshua following messianic plus plus a Diana worshiper which would be wrong because there's only one God and and the false false gods had to be rejected. The Philippian Yeshua followers had embraced a new Lord Yeshua, and in so doing they rejected the Emperor as God. And faith and they also and they accepted a faith in a crucified Jewish tradesman as their Messiah. They're, they they have accepted a new Lord. They rejected the the Emperor's Lord, they accept Yeshua, the crucified Jewish tradesman, as their Messiah and Lord. Paul shows his confidence that the love and unity that is the heart of his life and the life of the Messianic community in Philippi will enable them to stand firm in all circumstances, whether persecution by the Roman authorities, pagan religions, false teachers, and others that would come to pers persecute and the community and try to break their unity, trying to bring in false teachings that would would draw them away from their true, pure Yeshua faith. Their lives of unity grounded in love and faith in Yeshua will serve as a testimony to the opposition, those whose lives lead to destruction. In contrast, Paul calls the Philippians to look forward to their deliverance. Paul's confidence of deliverance is built on the promise of the Tanakh, of God's eventual vindication of his people. So Paul here is 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 making them aware that there will be opposition opposition to their faith, opposition to their their pure understanding of faith, following Yeshua, the righteous our righteous Messiah, and to not be frightened of any opposition, because the vindication of the believers in, in Yeshua, that vindication is secured as God speaks about promises, has promised over and over in the Tanakh about the the eventual just the eventual redemption, the eventual the eventual conquering of evil and the eventual deliverance and vindication of God's people that God is faithful to his promises that he's given in the past and Paul is sharing with the people of Philippi that despite the, the opposition to their new faith in Yeshua that there that there will be vindication in the end you know that as people say that, that at, you know at the end of the book good wins God wins Messiah wins at the at the end of time whether there's a difficulty suffering in, now in this life Yeshua wins, that the victory of good, the victory of God is secure, despite all that happens in the evil world. In verse 29 we read, Because for the Messiah's sake has been granted you not only to trust in him, 
but also to suffer on his behalf. So Paul here is continuing to, to tell them about their new life in the Messiah, that there will be that it will, that there will be suffering, but as we see in the previous verse, there will be vindication that despite all that the believers in Philippi and for us as those who are reading these words will go through for our, our faith trust in Yeshua, there will be vindication in the end. There will be struggles. There will be suffering in this world as we stand for the Messiah, but vindication will, will come. You know, this said, good wins, Messiah wins. There will be a vindication for the righteous, those who put their faith trust in Yeshua. Though seemingly con counterintuitive, a very contradictory statement we're going to make that suffering is to be granted as a gift for those who follow Yeshua. That, that in suffering for their faith in the Messiah, that it is a gift that the followers of Yeshua possess. Paul sees it as a privilege for himself to suffer on behalf of the Messiah and recommends the same attitude of the Philippians. So Paul, as I said, it seems counterintuitive that he sees suffering for the Messiah as a gift. And, and, and he's, he's calling the Philippians to understand that that in their suffering for them, for Messiah, they have been given an opportunity to, to show their willingness to suffer for the Messiah and to show their faithfulness to the one who suffered greatly for them. And we read in Acts 5.41 about the early Messianic Jews where we read, the emissaries left the Sanhedrin joy, overjoyed at having been considered worthy of suffering disgrace on account of him, on account of the Messiah. So this willingness to suffer for the Messiah is built into the very beginning of the Messianic community. This, this passage from Acts 5 was where, where the early leaders of the Messianic community were brought before the Sanhedrin and the, the, they were adjured that they were no longer to speak in the name of Yeshua, that they were commanded by the highest Jewish religious authority that they were no longer to speak in the name of Yeshua, they're no longer to preach in his name. And they knew that that they would have to reject that that uh, that command because they were that command was in violation of their their faith trust in Yeshua and the very command of Yeshua to go into all the world and preach the good news of the Messiah. So they knew that that they were by rejecting the call to be silent about Yeshua, that there would be suffering for them and death and for the early for Yeshua's Yeshua's uh, twelve Talmudim, the original the original disciples were what considered the apostles, all but all but Yochanan John actually died for their died for their faith. The eleven of them were martyred for their faith. And only only John actually got to live out live out his life and and uh, though he was he was set he was poisoned and survived poisoning to live out his life life until his death on the Isle of Patmos after he wrote the Revelation. Paul also acknowledged that his commitment to Yeshua was so deep that he was willing to follow the Messiah's path of suffering, including death by execution. Paul here is, is knowing that, that his life is so much about the Messiah that he he was willing, knowing that his Messiah suffered so much for him, even going dying on the Roman cross. Paul here is sharing his willingness to to go to even his death for the Messiah, and knowing that 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 his that this fate was was awaiting him soon, as as to the as to when 
Nero were, was to call for his execution. Paul says clearly the Philippians, the high cost of knowing Messiah and being a follower of Messiah, a path of suffering and death to endure before experiencing union with Yeshua fully in eternity. So Paul is making them making them understand that their that their faith trust in Yeshua will involve suffering, that will involve loss, and even and even for some some will involve death. And we see even today that there are are throughout throughout our world there are people people who are who are called upon to give their very lives for our Messiah. You know, though we, though we have not seen that in America or, or much of the Western world, in the, in the Eastern world, in, in China, as we see, see through those who have been, who have been killed for their faith throughout, throughout, uh, throughout our world, there are people even today who are giving their lives for the Messiah and their faith trust in Yeshua not, is not only involving suffering, but involving them giving their lives for the Messiah, that they are, that they are willing to, to, in their faith trust in Yeshua, to give their lives. And Paul, as I said, in 11 of Yeshua's original Talmudim, were, were called to do that and and took that upon them. So Paul is making it clear to the Philippians that that their faith trust in Yeshua will involve suffering, may involve death, but there will be vindication in the end, and Yeshua wins despite what happens in this world. There will be there will be vindication for those who have put their faith trust in Yeshua. And we come to the final verse of this chapter and our, our final, final thing we'll be looking at today. Verse 30 of chapter 1, we read, To fight the same battles you once saw me fight, and now here I'm still fighting. As one who has faced much persecution, Paul calls the Philippians to follow his example, a road of suffering. As Paul had faced opposition to his faith, in Yeshua. At his proclamation of the good news, he calls the believers in Philippi to stand firm and emulate his willingness to suffer for the faith. Along with rejecting their familial religious heritage, the religious beliefs of their past, of their family, of their tradition they had grown up, or the syncretic, the melding of religious traditions in, in Philippi, the, the, uh, the melding of various pagan practices. They in Philippi, these believers in Philippi, and us by extension have chosen another way, a way of rejection with outsider status. That not only, not only were these people in Philippi, they were taking on a new faith. They were actually leaving the faith traditions of their of their family in their past. In essence, they were rejecting their familial traditions. And for many of them, they would have been rejected by their families. And we know how that is common among among Jewish people who come to to put their faith in Yeshua. There is there is a separation between family members over over this this is this is the same thing in Philippi that people, people who were coming to put their faith in Yeshua, were also leaving their familial traditions, and even even leaving their families to put their faith trust in Yeshua. But they have chosen, but they who have, they and and us who have put our faith in Yeshua have chosen another way, a way of, into outsider status. The Yeshua faith of the people of Philippi place them at odds with their earthly society, both their family families and also by by rejecting rejecting the emperor as God, they were also separating themselves from civil society by saying Yeshua is Lord rather than Nero is Lord. And now they must be willing to bear the cost of following Yeshua. So Paul Paul is, is making clear that there is a cost 
for them, both familiarly and civilly, in their new faith tradition in Yeshua. And he wants to make them aware of this. They don't enter this lightly as if they were just choosing one of the many, many religious options of Philippi. They could just add on to their faith. But here he's saying, you've chosen the right path. You've chosen the way of the God of Israel. You've chosen the path to follow the Messiah. The Messiah who suffered and died for you. And in that, there will be vindication at the end. There will be life eternal. But there will be suffering and possibly even death in this world. But there will be life eternal. So with this, we conclude chapter one of the book of Philippians. And uh, we will be looking at the introduction to uh, chapter two tomorrow and getting into the first few verses of the chapter on tomorrow and Friday. And then uh, starting, starting on Monday, we'll be getting into the Messianic hymn, the core section of the book of, of Philippians, which is, which is an, considered to be an early, early Messianic Jewish him, a song about the Messiah, a song that uh, that honors the Messiah as the as the the divine one who came into our world, and we we'll, we'll see see this, and we'll be going we will be going poss possibly doing one verse per day throughout next week because there's so much material in Philippians two six through eleven. We'll be looking at at this passage, this this early early hymn, early praise song, this to Yeshua. You know, as I said earlier, you know, nineteen hundred years before, before my my mentor mentor uh, Rabbi Stuart Dowerman started writing songs for the Liberated Wailing Wall, there was a hymn to Yeshua that was spread throughout the Messian community, and Paul. Paul uh, shares this in the the uh, second chapter of his of his letter to the Philippians. So we'll be, be looking at that, the introduction and the first first few verses of Philippians over the next two days, and then we'll be spending next week to focus on on all next week. We'll be focusing on the Messianic hymn of chapter two, where we'll be looking at at the uh, declar the. This one passage, these these six verses, they go through the the coming in the world of our Messiah, his life on this earth, his death on the Roman cross, his resurrection, and his exaltation exaltation in heaven, and then his eventual acknowledgement by all of creation that he is the one to which all knees will bow. So we are concluding for today. Thank you for watching this program. This is the Letter to Philippi live broadcast. My name is Sean Emsley. I will be your teacher. And uh, Letter to Philippi is an initiative. Letter to Philippi live is an initiative of Letter to Philippi Incorporated, a, a uh, nonprofit religious organization a, a, and uh, that you can find out more about at lettertophilippi.org. And we are a Messianic Jewish theological and biblical studies organization. And uh, we appreciate uh, your prayers for this continuing work, for you to be with us Monday through Friday at uh, 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Uh, Jerusalem time. And... Uh, Hopefully uh, you'll be with us tomorrow as we as we begin chapter two and next week we'll be going throughout the Messianic hymn. So have a blessed day and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching and uh, we will be concluding for today. As I said, you can go to lettertophilippi.org to find out more about the organization, to leave a prayer request, if you'd like to make a donation to our organization. Find out more about what we are doing. And as I said, we will be 
be adding more more content, including our uh, Messian and Jewish book reviews in the near future. So once again, have a great day and visit letter to philippi.org. And uh, that will be all for today. Shalom, everyone. Thank you for watching and see you tomorrow at noon Pacific time.